everyone. Good day. Hope you are staying safe and healthy. Have you ever wondered what's happening in this particular diagram, which was quite famous a couple of years back? So this plot shows a simulation of how humans spend their time in a particular city. Uh, you have different states. Uh, it can be sleeping, work, home, sport, uh, being sick, or they are eating, so on and so forth. Looking at this, you see that the same circle as it goes into different states, like if they are sleeping, it has a, takes a different color. If it goes to home, it takes a different color. If, it's go, if they are sick, they take a different color. If they are eating, they take a different color. So what is actually happening in this? That is what we will be learning today and uh, that is called as agent-based simulation. Let's take the traditional uh, rock, paper, scissors game uh, where we have agent rock which beats scissors and loses to paper, agent paper beats rock but loses to scissors and then finally we have agent scissors which beats paper but loses to rock. In this traditional game of rock, paper, scissors we have three different agents which act independently with each other. So rock interacts with paper, then rock loses, then rock interacts with scissors, rock wins. Now each one of this when put into a environment, we can say there are three different agents and then we can let them interact with each other and see on a bigger scale what the output is going to be. Uh, there is a traditional, uh, there is a very famous game which is a rock, paper, scissor simulator and I remember uh, someone was doing the simulation with over 100 agents and each one is a different uh, agent at start but then once they interact they change the nature. So if rock beats scissors, scissors will turn into rock so and then so on and so forth that simulation was repeated. Now what are agents? The question is so we have identified rock, paper, scissors are three different agents, but what are the core functionalities of agents? Agents need to have four major characteristics. One is autonomy, second is modularity, third is conditionality, and fourth is sociality. I will go into a little more details about each one of this. The first one is autonomy. Autonomy is an agent can operate independently. These actions are based on rules and it will be able to interact with other agents and the environment. Then comes modularity. When I say modularity, uh, it means uh, we each of the agent is distinct and self-contained. They can operate independently. And then they also have a clear definition of what their character is and they can make the decisions by themselves. Then we have sociality, wherein about how one agent interacts with other agents and how they exchange information. And if one agent can influence the state of and decision of the other agent, like the rock beating scissors or scissors beating paper. Finally, we have conditionality which states, okay, the, based on the time, the conditions can change. So uh, if we are talking about COVID spread, we can say there are certain times when the COVID spread was higher compared to other situations. So that is conditional towards the time. Now that we have understood the major parts of how an agent is and what an agent is, let's go one step forward and try to uh, develop a very simple uh, COVID simulation based on agents through ChatGPT. And the going with the theme of the channel, we will do everything from scratch and we will develop a very nice looking agent-based simulation out of ChatGPT from scratch. For this exercise, we need to create a Python code. So I am in the ChatGPT interface and I am asking the GPT to create a working Python code to create an animation of COVID-19 simulation purely using agent-based models. 
now i want to create this and i also want to sh make sure the agents are moving so they are dynamic and finally i want to save them as a gif file and have them labeled for the amount of population and the steps which they are taking once i give that prompt you can see that chat gpt starts developing the python code the reason why the python code is required for this is chat gpt currently does not have the python interpreter so for some cases it will work for some complicated cases it might not have the bandwidth so now you can see gpt gave a very nice piece of code giving the parameters the loops whichever it needs to be done it also gave uh, the text boxes and asked us to save in this particular uh, place so it will be saved in covid simulation.jeff it will also have the text box whichever we asked for the population and the steps now once we run this we we basically copy this and paste it into our uh, python interpreter and then once we run it we will be able to see the gifs and we'll be able to see the simulation let's get that going so let me copy the code using the option present here i click copy and then i go into my jupyter interface which is where i have my python code i just paste it basically copy from there paste it slightly modify uh, to avoid some warnings but it's predominantly the same where you have the same parameters we have an uh, initial population size of 500 we can play around with this number population size basically says how many agents we are playing with we also say that how many time steps it needs to be run for we provide infection radius infection probability so on and so forth all of these are customizable and playing with this we will be able to create a better and more realistic agent based simulation now i am creating currently for a 500 population size but i'll also be doing for 50 population size i'll also be doing it for 100 and 250 to make a comparison for the same parameters now i click run now it, while it is saving so i think it is saved now let's take a look at it so this is how a population of 500 the simulation looks like so you can see that by step 40 itself it completely uh, spread over the entire population here the yellow means people with covid the blue is people without covid and by step 90 it, the steps can be a time step the step can be movement of people you can see how quickly it can change now here i have on the uh, i did it for population of 50 100 250 and also 500 now you can see that uh, population of 250 is also becoming worse but for population size of 150 it is much much better that's the reason why we had uh, safe distancing measures while covid uh, was it's at its peak and this kind of simulations will help us to create such policies so here we created agents and ran them to multiple simulations to get to understand what is happening at different scenarios and agent based models are one of the best ways to do the simulation now before going uh, i created an image at the starting which uh, showed about how people were moving from one uh, in a state where they are spending the maximum amount of time i'll show you the python code for the same uh, this was done by using d3 blocks uh, it's very very simple code it's basically the example itself is present within uh, d3 blocks which is a package which is inherently available you can download it once you download it and run this three lines of code it will provide you an url once you click on the url you'll be taken into this particular simulation where you can see uh, in a day from uh, midnight to midnight you can see how people spend different times within uh, in different states in a city uh, i can also uh, based on uh, p cars it will be much more dynamic 
compared to off peak hours where it will be a little more static the interactions which, which be a little less so while watching the intra while watching the simulation let's uh, summarize whatever we have learned today so agents basically are uh, very good tools to simulate complicated scenarios uh, for example how the covid is going to spread over time uh, or also we can do traffic simulations we can also uh, do how the resources are required at different different locations and what agent does is every single agent has a rule rule book and based on the rule book following the four principles whichever i have mentioned it will keep doing its own thing while looked up in a bigger environment you look at these interactions and from there you learn a lot more as shown uh, we can also prepare a very simple uh, agent based simulation or a model using gpt the only dependency being you need to have a python interpreter installed on your side um, even though it's not a complicated one, uh, uh, but still that will be the one dependency which I have introduced into this particular video. For the simple reason, uh, GPT's Python interpreter is still not at that level where it can do complicated coding. So that brings me to the end of the video. Hope you all liked today's video. If, uh, if you like the video, as usual, the spiel goes. Uh, like share and subscribe uh, hope uh, more people will be aware of our content and may all of us keep continuously learning thank you have a good day